Welcome back to my movie review series. Today's review will be the 2014 Marvel Studios movie, and this one is, Guardians of the Galaxy. The movie was premiered on August 1, 2014. The movie is airing on FX, and streaming on Disney+, Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, and Apple TV. The story is very well written as while it does take a lot of creative liberties from the original comics, I think said creative liberties are for the better as this movie has a lot going for it such as some very fun and awesome action, some very funny comedy along with some very strong and compelling drama. The tone is pretty well balanced as while it's mostly pretty fun and light-hearted, it also makes room for some more dark moments. The galactic setting of this film is a very welcome change of pace from the prior MCU films which were all mostly set on Earth, and does a great job at expanding the world and lore of the MCU. The movie has a lot of heart and charm, and on top of that, this film marks the proper introduction of the Infinity Stones, as well as Thanos, and sets them up as major plot threads for later films in the Infinity Saga. The action scenes in this movie are just awesome as they're a lot of fun and very exciting, but they can also get very intense and even kinda suspenseful such as Star-Lord's escape from Morai with the orb, the clash between Star-Lord, Gamoro, Rocket, and Groot on Xander for the orb, their escape from the prison along with Drax, the group's encounter with Ronan's forces on Nair, and the climax where the newly titled Guardians of the Galaxy, as well as the Ravagers and the Nova Corps, unite to battle Ronan and his army on Xander. The comedy of this movie is very solid as it manages to be very well executed and results in the movie having a ton of very funny lines and moments such as the witty and snarky banter, dialogue, and trash talking between the characters, the visual humor and occasional gags, and the occasional adult joke. But the movie isn't all laughs and action as there's also some very strong and well executed drama and heart which does give the movie a good amount of heart and charm to it such as the opening scene with a young Quill seeing his dying mother, the shaky but strong family-like bond that forms between the Guardians, certain deaths, sacrifices, and backstories, and so on. The production design is very good as it really does show a lot of its value with the sets and set pieces all being very well made and being given a great amount of detail. The actual filming locations featured are very well utilized, the lighting is very solid and effective, and the costumes, makeup, and clothing are all very well crafted such as the outfits for Star-Lord and so forth, the makeup for characters like Gamoro, Drax, Nebula, Yondu, Ronan, and a lot of the background characters. The special effects are amazingly well done as they look incredibly good and well crafted such as the designs and effects for characters like Rocket, Groot, Thanos, and some of the other aliens and creatures, the space scenes, the Milano and other spacecrafts with both their designs and them flying around, Yondu's arrow, the lasers and explosions, the fire and destruction, the CG enhanced backgrounds, the film's various locations and their architecture and environments, the orb in the powers and aura of the power stone, and more. The characters are all very likable and well written as while they can be pretty snarky and crude, they all have a great amount of chemistry and dynamics, wit and humor, charm and charisma, and growth and development such as the cocky Peter, Star Lord, the stern gay Mauro, the brawny Drax, the trash talking Rocket, the living tree Groot, the hot-headed Yondu, the obsessive collector, some of the more minor characters like Rimen, Kraglin, Nova Prime, and so forth, and there's a very funny cameo in the post credit scenes from Howard the Duck. As for the villains, they're mostly alright as Ronan, despite being a bit one-note, is legit very menacing and ruthless, Nebula is pretty skilled and deadly, Korat is okay enough, and this film marks the more official debut of Thanos and is shown to be very no-nonsense and determined in his goals. And this character would only be expanded upon in both Avengers, Infinity War and Avengers, and Game. The acting is very good as the live actors and voice actors all deliver some stellar performances such as Chris Pratt as Peter, Star-Lord, Zoe Saldana as Game Auro, Dave Bautista as Drax, Bradley Cooper as Rocket, Van Diesel as Groot, Lee Pace as Ronan, Michael Rooker as Tondu. Karen Gillan as Nebula, 
Jimin Hounsu as Korat, John C. Riley as Herman, Glenn Close as Nova Prime, Benicio Del Toro as The Collector, Josh Brolin as Thanos, Seth Green as Howard, and more. The music of this movie is very good as both the score by Tyler Bates is very awesome and well composed, and it does a great job at capturing the movie's fun, action-packed, comedic, intense, dramatic, and charming tone, and not to mention the soundtrack contains plenty of classic songs from the late 1960s to the 1970s picked by James Gunn himself such as Blue Swede's Hooked on a Feeling, Redbone's Come and Get Your Love. Rupert Holmes' Panica Lauda Song, David Bowie's Menage Daydream, The Jackson 5's I Want You Back, Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell's Ain't No Mountain High Enough, and more, this movie gets a 9 out of 10. I remember when this movie was announced, lots of people had their doubts about it because it sounded so weird and far-fetched, but then when it came out, it was definitely a big surprise with how good and well made it turned out, and it ended up becoming one of the best and most beloved entries the MCU has to offer. This is an absolute must watch.